A COVID wastewater testing pilot's being rolled out around the country as a safety net for catching the virus in the community. The eight-week ESR pilot will see sewage sampled at managed isolation and quarantine facilities, as well as in communities that don't have MIQ hotels, including Gisborne, Dunedin, Queenstown, Taupo and Whangarei. People with COVID can excrete the virus for weeks, so a positive wastewater test would mean health authorities could target testing testing in a community to contain the spread. ESR's Dr Brent Gilpin explains how accurate sewage testing for COVID is. When this works first started, there were sort of dreams that you'd better just look in the sewage and say this relates to five people or 500 or or a few people. I think as we're realising, people can shed from in the, the virus anywhere from just a few hundred uh, per mil of, of whatever you're looking at through to potentially trillions of viruses. So being, what you can really say from detecting in, in sewage is that there's at least one person excreting virus sometime in the, in the previous period. Um, some of the things we're really learning is around how long people shed the virus. And so people typically shed the most virus around the time that they show uh, symptoms and for sort of two to five day, days afterwards. But people may shed virus for up to five weeks afterwards um, in their faeces or from other, other forms. OK, so to be blunt about this, are you saying that COVID or, or evidence of COVID stays in your poos and wheeze for several weeks? It can well do. So, so it seems that uh, the, the shedding that comes in the nasal pharyngeal area, area um, peaks uh, earlier, but people will, will sort of continue to shed some remnants of the virus in their faeces, which starts to occur a bit later and carries on. Um, and when we're looking at sewage, we're also looking at what you spit. So uh, everything that goes into the sewer system, you brush your teeth, you spit, you clean your, your nostrils out, you hoik in the, in the shower, as well as what comes out um, through the number ones and twos. Um, but so, so both fecal uh, deposits as well as what you might be spitting are both going to contribute into the sewer. So if you get a positive test, you know that someone's got it, but... Is there any chance that testing will develop to the point where you can say uh, there's this level of evidence, so therefore there are two, three, four or five people who have this in the area we've sampled from? Well, I, I guess I should emphasise that detections in, in the sewage um, of, the, of viral fragments, the response to this is to prompt additional testing of people. So really, uh, in Australia, they've had a number of detections um, in wastewater, and only and in most of those, they haven't actually found people in the community who are actively shedding. So there certainly hasn't been an outbreak, which may mean that either someone who was previously infected um, and is no longer infectious was shedding, a bit, shedding some virus, um, and then when they went back to look for them, they just stopped shedding, or else it may in some of those situations have been a case where someone was passing through the, the truck driver who stopped in one of these locations, left his deposit in the sewer system and then carried on. Um, so I think it's going it's, it's, uh, unlikely that you can really get down to definitively saying this is one person or five person people. What, you, what I think we will better say is that there's someone, either someone or a number of people who are um, like, more likely to be infectious based on the uh, levels of virus present. And then the other bit that we're really looking to develop is the genotyping approach. So being able to take what we detect in the sewage and match it up with the known known strains or types of, of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which may enable us to say, well, that matches up with a known cluster of cases that we have, or this is something unexpected and different to what we not, we've uh, seen before. But your, the testing you are doing is so sensitive because the volume of material that you're talking about here is not small in terms of the waste. So you are able to detect a, a, a potentially a single person who is infected. Yes, yes. Um, and... The, the, it's, I mean, it's amazing when you think about the hundreds of millions of litres of sewage a day. Um, we're taking 24-hour composite samples where we take a few mils of, of water every 15 minutes, combine that together into a sample, and then there's quite a complicated extraction process of concentrating that sewage down, pulling out the viral fragments amongst everything that's there, and then we use the same PCR-type detection to look for these fragments. And we're looking really at, at, at the extreme ends of the detection limits when you get out into sewage but we are able to pick up virus that could be from just one person. But um, that one person um, could be sh could be shedding trillions of viruses um, if, if they're a highly infectious person. 
I assume that the, the testing that you've done at the isolation and quarantine facilities has kind of enabled you to um, establish a, a, a kind of benchmark. And the value of then uh, spreading the testing regime is what you were talking about. You're testing sites where there shouldn't be anyone who is returning a positive test. Yes, yeah, and I mean, we're very confident in, in the method uh, as, as it's established, and there's a significant amount of development improvement work that can carry on, but it is at a, at a point where we could apply it as it is, and, I, and we believe it's going to provide value if there was an unexpected um, outbreak in the community. And even, and, and even if the chances of picking it up are, um, are certainly not 100% and maybe you know, even less than 50%, because of the severe impact of, um, of an outbreak, it's worth uh, deploying that now um, and having this as a tool that can be uh, added to the arsenal in New Zealand. For it to be effective then, wouldn't it have to be ongoing uh, testing? You would have to continue this regime indefinitely. Uh, well, I guess we are looking at, a, I mean, there's a number of um, components of, of when a vaccine is developed, which again could, uh, is another question of if people start having uh, vaccinated, will we pick up some fragments of virus from the vaccine in, um, in, in the sewage and how will that affect uh, the testing we might have? Um, it's, uh, this is a tool that could be used not just for this um, pandemic but for, for future ones for monitoring what's going on um, but we're certainly clearly not going to test all billion litres of sewage that are produced in New Zealand every day. And that was Dr Brent Gilpin from ESR. After the eight-week pilot, recommendations for ongoing surveillance will go to the government and any community positives from the wastewater testing during the study will be reported to the Ministry of Health immediately.